Hello and welcome to this Cartoon Smart video tutorial. The series here is Exploring Adobe Illustrator CS5. And this video in particular is Use Preview Bounds, which is an option in your General Preferences panel. I'm Brian Zakowski, so let's get started. For this video, you do not need to open a document. I'm just going to demonstrate something here. Uh, I already have a cartoon character or an object. Um, here in my document and I'm going to use this guy here to demonstrate uh, the use preview bounds option. Now just a little bit about this character here just in case you're interested. This guy was in a, uh, a cartoon I did where he's looking down at his wife who's sitting in a chair in the, in the living room and uh, he's looking down at her and he's saying to her well, yes, I did sleep like a baby. Assuming she previously asked him, how did you sleep? All right. Anyway. So. I want you to go ahead and... Actually, you don't have a document open, so you don't even have to do it. But what should I do here? I'm going to open a, a panel called... Um, I forgot what I was looking for already. Oh, no, right there, info. Okay, but let me go there again just to show you. Uh, info. It's Command F8 on the Mac, but make note of, if you're on a Windows machine, make note of what that is and try to use your keyboard shortcuts. For these videos, I like to go ahead and use the menus. That way, in case you're not somebody who likes to use keyboard shortcuts, you get an idea where they would be, these options would be in the menus. Okay, so now we have... Uh, our little info panel open and when I have my my character selected here he's grouped just to mention that these coordinates right here these X and Y coordinates show where he is on in the document so if I move him closer to the top left he's going to be closer to zero inches I have my document set up in inches if I move him away that of course gets bigger if I move him down a little bit more you know, the Y coordinate gets to be a little bit more. What we're concentrating on here in this video is the width and height of the actual object. Um, right now it's 2.66 something and his height is 6.53 something. And if I go ahead and make a duplicate, <coughs> excuse me, of this guy by holding down my option key and dragging him over, release with the left mouse button first before letting go with option and I have two identical guys who just slept like a baby Okay, this one if you'll notice the width and height here is the same as if I was to click on this guy so they're identical but say I want to apply drop shadow to this guy and for some reason how big the object is with the drop shadow included is important. For instance, we'll say that's important. So I'm going to go to Effect and I'm going to go down to Stylize and click on Drop Shadow. Now you might have noticed up here that when I click on Effect I have Apply Drop Shadow and Drop Shadow already showing right here. That may not be the case on your computer at the moment because I recently applied a drop shadow so once you've applied an object and you go ahead to the effect menu again, it's going to show you the most previous effect that you applied in the top two slots. If I was to select apply drop shadow right here, it would apply the same exact drop shadow that I did previously. If I was to select this drop shadow, you notice you have the, the dot dot dot. That means I'm going to get, I'll just show you the option to customize <clears throat> the drop shadow so but but just for this purpose I'm going to show you go down to stylize over to drop shadow and you'll get that same panel <clears throat> as you got when we were right there okay so the actual drop shadow in this case doesn't really matter its op opacity is 75 percent and these factors are fine. So now we have um, this 
character here with a drop shadow. So now if I click on the character with no drop shadow, look at the dimensions in this box, 2.66 by 653. Now if I click on the character with the drop shadow, he's 309 and 695 for the height. Yeah. The reason for this video is to show you the use preview bounds option in preferences. If I did not have the use preview bounds selected, I'll turn that off and click OK. You may have noticed that that uh, the bounds automatically shrunk to the bounds of the outer stroke of the character as opposed to the drop shadow that I put on there. So we'll go back and go back to preferences, general, use preview bounds. Click OK. See how it jumps up to encapsulate the drop shadow that we made? That right there explains the option use preview bounds. So that's all there is really to that. Um, I don't know if that will, would ever be useful to you. Um, it may or may not. So um, for Cartoon Smart, I'm Brian Zakowski. I hope this was helpful and you do get some use out of it though. Thank you for watching.